All right, cool. Hey, so this is a pretty quick talk. It's only half an hour. We're out at four. So um, we're going to give you a quick overview of the Fedora Hubs project, what it is, why we're working on it, an overview of how it works um, technically. And then oh, we're doing a demo, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to do a small demo, too. So you can kind of see where the project's at and then where to go from here. OK, so oh, my name is Maureen Duffy. I'm the UX designer for Fedora Hubs. And this is Aurelian Bompard. He's one of the developers. And then Cyan Jowherty, he's the other one. Um, and you'll, you'll get to hear from them directly, too, as we get to their parts of the presentation. So <clears throat> this is just an overview of what we're going to talk about. First, we'll talk about what is Fedora Hubs, why are we making it, what's the point, because that's kind of important to know. Um, then we're going to go into the architecture of Fedora Hubs, um, the basic architecture, how do the widgets work, because widgets are a core concept in Hubs, and um, sort of the, our roadmap, what, where are we going from here, what are we going to be working on and focusing on, and then um, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, how you can get involved, um, you know, all, all different things like that. So let's move on. So why are we, why are we building Fedora Hubs? Um, one of the key kind of problems to solve that we were looking at for Fedora Hubs is um, trying to get new contributors introduced into Fedora without causing issues for pre-existing contributors. This has been something that on the Fedora infrastructure team we've been working on. We've kind of tried different um, approaches over the years of doing things. And what we found is sometimes if you do something to help new users, you disrupt existing users. And sometimes when you cater to the existing users, it's to the detriment of new users. So we wanted to build a system that would help pre-existing users, you know, not throw them off. They could use it if they wanted. But for new contributors, it would make it so much easier to get on board. And I don't know how many of you in here have ever um, onboarded a new contributor as sort of their mentor in Fedora. Or, you know, maybe some of you have recently been onboarded in Fedora, but it's definitely a, a very windy path involving a lot of different systems, and you definitely need some hand-holding there. So we wanted to make it a lot easier to join the project. We also wanted to make the different efforts across the project um, more kind of consistent, more visible. So each team within Fedora is almost like its own little, I don't know what to call it, like its own little organization, right? And every team has its own sort of workflow, the, the kinds of artifacts that they work with. Um, they, they have their own organization is how they work with a team. And that's great. We're a community project. We do things in that kind of organic manner. And we let teams organize themselves however they see, see fit is the best way to do it. But because of that, the way teams work is somewhat inconsistent. Like, like one team might use Bugzilla. Another team might use Pagur. One team might use the wiki and rely very heavily on wiki documentation. And another team might use Git and keep documents in Git. So we want to let teams do what they do. You know, you do you teams. And we just want to look at kind of the artifacts and things they're producing and bubble them up to the surface in a single unified interface. So if someone comes to Fedora and like they want to, you know, what is the design team working on? Is this a team that I want to join? You know, kind of shop around and see what the teams are working on. They could go to the design team hub, see screenshots of what we're working on, see our blog posts, see our mailing list posts, and really get a feel for what we're working on. And not just what we're working on, but what we're actively working on. Because wiki pages are kind of old the second that you hit publish on them. Whereas if we could give people a feed of the, the activity that's going on in fed message, you know that people are actively working on that. So if you wanted to jump in, there's someone thinking about that right now. It's not some dead wiki page that hasn't been touched for years, right? Because we've all encountered that too, I think. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is basically what I just told you. Um, but I, the other idea with hubs is that, you know, the, the primary focus was we want to make it easier for new contributors to join our project. But another focus is, can we make life easier for existing contributors? A lot of contributors in Fedora are volunteers. This is not their day job. This is something that they do on the side. They enjoy being part of the community. But there's so much going on, it's really, really hard to keep up. So we were looking at models of, you know, how do people keep up with the news? How do they keep up with friends? And, like, the single consistent thing seems to be, like, this sort of stream of content, you know, like a Twitter timeline or a Facebook feed or all that kind of stuff. So we wanted to make 
keeping up with Fedora, even when it's like an occasional thing, to make it easy to keep up with what's going on. So you have this one single interface that you can go to to keep up with all the things you missed since the last time you logged in, rather than have to hunt like, oh, well, I'll go to Fedora Magazine, then I'll go to you know, the ticket system, and then I'll go to the IRC logs. And instead of being pulled in a million directions, you can just go to the Fedora team you're interested in and check in on it. All right, so now Raleen's going to talk about the architecture. So yeah, uh, basically hubs is a um, web page where you have different components inside the web page. And those components will be uh, different depending on the team and the, how they're working, what aspect they're working on. And those, so those components are called widgets and they're um, on the left you have the web browser and you have those widgets in your web page and they're, co they're connected to the back end and those widgets are connecting to external services. What I mean by external services, it can be um, federal services like updates for example, like the, um, uh, the badges, all the things that make, um, that compose the federal um, experience as a contributor, or they can be really external services like GitHub, for example. So there can be anything that brings information relevant to what you're working on uh, in your team or as a single contributor. Um, right here, you have an example of a web page. Um, it's, I don't know if we'll have a pointer here, but basically you have a list of hubs that you've subscribed to in the menu on the left. And you, <laughs> thanks. And you have the, uh, the the feed that Mo was talking about, which is all the activity of your team or of your single contributor. And on the right, you could have also separate widgets, which are specific to your workflow. You can have like um, widgets on your team activity, on your badges, on the people that you are following, all that kind of stuff. So these are the. Uh, go ahead. So uh, on the right that you see the badges and uh, uh, like the members on stuff. So these are basically the external services that we are connecting to and fetching the data from those external services. And um, so on the left hand side you can see multiple uh, hubs in place. And these are basically the different hubs like the design hub, the infrastructure hub. And your personal profile is also considered as a hub. So all the th all the hubs are basically listed on the left hand side as a nav bar. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So this is kind of an update that you can do. Like this is kind of a social media that we are building inside. Uh, like the idea is a platform for the contributors to collaborate, communicate, and get to know the status of what's happening in that particular hub. So this is kind of a, a post that you can do. Yep. So how does it work, um, those widgets? Basically, everything that you see displayed on the page except the menu on the left is widgets. We have tried to make a system that makes it very easy to create new widgets because we want teams to be able to create their own widgets if they need to. We will sh we'll be shipping a lot of them, like, uh, for example, wiki updates, for example, um, update that you, packages update that are available that, that you have just worked on, uh, badges too, but th it should be easy for a team to create their own widgets if it's specific to their workflow. So we have a framework for that. Um, the, yeah, the widgets can, can um, co talk to external services like body, badges, Pagure. Basically, that's just a bit of code, but it's just to show you how easy it is to create a widget. Um, you just import the class, it's in Python. You just import the class and you set up name, you set up a position, and you have a root view, a basic uh, view, that will call up the component of the widgets on the page. And that can be a very simple API REST call to something external formatted to, sh to, uh, to be displayed on the page. And of course, that will use, um, that will use a, a, tem a template, an HTML template. And of course, when you do calls to external services, it can be slow, so we want to cache that. Any widget can use cached, what we call cache functions, which are just a way to cache the results of an external call or a very um, intensive computing thing, uh, uh, operation. And this, these cached uh, functions will be, um, will of course display, display much faster in the UI and they will also be automa automatically invalidated when a relevant message appears on the bus. So for example, you have a wiki, um, 
you have a wiki widget that shows you your, your last edits. As soon as you edit something on a wiki page, there is a Fed message uh, sent to, um, well, sent to the federal bus, and that will get caught by hubs, and it will know to refresh this widget with the last edit that you've just made. So everything will appear transparently. You just do something on the federal infrastructure as a whole, and it will refresh the relevant widgets on the hubs. Yeah. So uh, the road ahead. So the thing is now uh, we have a hub instance, uh, devil instance running, and you can actually log in uh, there and see how actually uh, hubs looks and get the feel of that, uh, get the feel of hubs. But going ahead, we are planning to roll hubs into production because it has been there into dev uh, devil instance for a long time. And uh, before moving ahead, so first thing we are planning to do is, uh, so our always target was to re uh, release the design hub first and get all the necessary widgets that are necessary for the design hub. But moving forward, uh, we would like to have the ambassador hub in place because there was a discussion going on like uh, we should, uh, there was a necessity for the hubs to uh, like know which all ambassadors are there in uh, which, who all are the active ambassadors around the world. So knowing that can be uh, easier to communicate around, uh, around the uh, different ambassadors. So, so the thing is we can have the ambassador hub and you can get all the latest updates in place and then we have uh, something as uh, regional hubs which uh, Suzanne will be talking on and, uh, and then we have the websites team having a separate hub and uh, we a few of the uh, mock-ups like uh, Mismo has been working on the mockups for different widgets. So one of the team that is not included here, but uh, have all the most of the mockups ready is the translation hub that we can go forward with it. So these are the few teams that we need to roll out first, and then these teams can start working on their hub and like interact regularly, do a regu uh, use it on a regular basis, so that we can go get more uh, feedback on how to improve hubs and like get features and then have contributors from the team to work on hubs so that uh, because we are kind of uh, on low resource now so if we get more people to work on hubs it's better so that we can roll out more much more faster so um, one thing that I wanted to note that uh, you know the reason that we targeted the teams that we did is because in the past we've built systems that were focused on packagers because we figured, well, it's one of the largest communities yeah. within Fedora. And what we found out in trying to tailor tools like this um, to packagers is that packagers already have a pretty good personal workflow for doing what they do and it's really hard to get them to try to adopt something new. Um, and we were trying to target teams that don't actually have tools that support their workflow in Fedora right now. Um, because we figured, well, you know, the they don't have any alternative, so they'll be more willing and more receptive to trying a new tool, and it might actually, you know, help them become more efficient. So, uh, as I told, like, uh, we have the translation team, which uh, after uh, rolling out, like, the ambassador websites and the uh, design hub, we will be working on the translation meeting and the regional hubs. So, uh, and then moving ahead, we, right now we don't have a very much uh, good communication on what actually happening in the federal house front. So I was talking with uh, uh, one of the uh, OpenStack folks on how they are getting more contributors. So they usually have a bi-weekly sprint, so where they dedicate uh, two hours, uh, two hours just to work with the contributors on a bi-weekly basis. So that's something we should be starting on hub side also. And then a bi-weekly blog post on what's actually happening around uh, in the hubs uh, project. So how can you actually help? So first and foremost is like you can build widgets in hubs. So uh, we have a bunch of issues uh, already created where the mockups are already done, but uh, there's no one right now working on it. So you can start building those widgets. So like, uh, like the uh, meeting widget, you can start building on. You, uh, new, you need to know on how Fedocal works, how the API works, and then uh, you can start building the widgets based on the API. And then uh, triage issues. 
So we have a lot of open issues, as I told. So you can go ahead and see if the the ones which are bugs, if they can be reproduced and uh, like take appropriate action on it. And then we have the documentation for hubs. So right now we are focusing on more documentation because we try. We really need to work on the contributor base, and we uh, so we are planning to have more and more documentation so that people can quickly build widgets and then help us with different stuffs. And uh, one of the main concerns is the uh, code documentation, like having the documentation in the code. So that's one of the area you can actually start contributing. And then you have, uh, okay, so uh, then you can actually, it should not be design widget, it's basically design uh, for hubs. So um, there are a lot of mockups, which are basically wireframes that have been made, but not actual mockups, which uh, sh should which sh uh, should be uh, made into the front end, but there are actually mockups like Suzanne has been working on the event uh, and the regional hubs mockups. So you can actually start working uh, with uh, the team, design team, and convert them into proper mockups. So that's one area. If you are a designer, you can start contributing to that part, and then connect teams for hubs. So basically, going forward, we need more and more hubs in place. So if you have, if you are working in a particular field, so you can actually start uh, integrating and ask like which all features do that particular team need and uh, come on IRC and talk with us and then we can have uh, a hub for you, for your team and you can start using that as a full time, yep. So where do we meet? So we usually are online on Federal Hubs channel and every uh, Tuesday at 1400 UTC, we have our weekly updates, and we have a meeting actually. So we usually have a uh, like what's going on and what's the status of uh, basically a status update meeting, and what are the focus that should we should be planning on in the future. So you can, if you are planning to contribute, you should uh, j uh, drop to the hubs meeting, and it's a place where you can get started. Yeah, so this is one thing that I was talking of, deploying hubs to production. Yes, we are very close, and earlier worked on the Ansible also, so the, right now the Vagrant setup is really, really easy, so you can just uh, uh, go uh, clone the project and just do a Vagrant up, and your project will be up and running. So, so the plan is, after post log we start moving towards deploying it to production, and then, but, we need to build our widgets ecosystem. So we need your help on building those widgets. So we, you can use the Hubs uh, Dev Fedora Infra Cloud. So you can just pay, go on to this website and see how uh, actually uh, Hubs looks right now. And uh, we are actually hacking on uh, Hubs tomorrow. So. In that hackfest, uh, Olio will be giving a small workshop on how uh, you can start building your uh, widgets, and then we have a lot of open issues, so you can start building, and we will be around to help you around. So uh, it should be easy for you to con start contributing and get active on the Federal Hubs community. And uh, so the hackfest is in, uh, I guess, in the same room. I think so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. So Sorry. we have uh, the. Eva Hackfest in the same room, so please come down and start hack uh, on hubs. We really need you to help us with the project. Yep. So do you want to show the demo as well? Uh, do the team? Yeah, I can do the demo. Sure. Then we can have. Oh, and um, I also I wanted to mention Suzanne is giving a talk at it's 2 p.m. on Thursday, right? Yeah. And she's going to go over sort of the regional hubs feature um, uh, that you know she's done all the initial design research and, and the actual design and planning for the feature. So if you're interested in contributing to Hubs, this is how you can learn more about the design for this feature so you could get started implementing. It's also a great case study of how to, to perform UX within a project. So if you have a project that needs UX help and you kind of want to DIY it, Suzanne's going to give you a pretty good roadmap for how to do that for your own project in a case study style. So please check that talk out too. Wi-Fi here is is slow, and I wonder if that's because I'm the I'm on the wrong Wi-Fi, which is totally possible. Um, let me check that. Resort and Conf Center, yeah, that's not a good one. Okay. 
Okay, uh, let me try that again. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Of course, because I just changed my IP, I pr it's probably not happy about that. Ah, uh, security, you know. Is anybody here planning to go to the Hackfest? Cool, cool. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, he, Aurelian's put together a really nice workshop. Like even if you're not familiar with web development, you can kind of go in and it's, you're gonna learn a lot from doing it. Come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you have a question? Um, so the question was, is a widget linked to one team or can many teams use it? And it really depends on the widget. Um, they're implemented in a pretty broad manner. So, you know, for example, I'll give you, um, well, actually, you can look here. So um, this, this is my hub. So uh, that's in the middle. That's, what I'm, that's my activity recently. So I've, I, I know that I've uploaded this module here. I did this earlier. And I, you don't see the date here because the, we don't have a good contrast, but um, there's a time. And I apparently there's something, some ashram ingested. I don't know what this is, but it, it's interesting. It may uh, tell me that I have something else to do. For example, my build failed somewhere, or... The thing appears? Okay, very interesting. Uh, so yeah, I've uploaded a new ticket here, uh, moved to Oh, I moved to position 107 on badge leaderboard. Oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Okay, so that's just my activity coming from that message. Um, it actually gives a good idea of what is going on, on a, for a person or a team. So I think that's pretty useful. And then we have here a widget on the right called Bugzilla Issues. So I have my current open Bugzillas uh, when I'm a point of contact for the package. Um, sorry? Yeah. That Bugzilla yeah. widget, like it can apply to a person's hub, but it can also apply to a team hub. So that's an example of a widget that can apply to yeah. pretty much any team. And you configure which, you know, you configure, oh, well, it's this Pagur issue um, or it's this Bugzilla instance or whatever. You can configure that stuff so it'll display. And we have support for Pagur. I think yep. track we're deprecating because we don't use it anymore, but it is yeah. implemented and um, Bugzilla at this point. I, we might, we have GitHub too, right? We do have GitHub. Yeah, we have GitHub issue support too. So this is like a way, like you can kind of see, like as an example, is the widget looks the same and sort of the implementation part, whether or not the team uses GitHub or Track or whatever, that's sort of hidden. The main thing is you can see the team's issues. So it's one of those things where teams are inconsistent as to where they track their issues and you don't need to worry about that. We show it to you, the team configures it and that's it and you have a consistent interface for seeing that. So that's sort of a really good micro example of what we're trying to do here. Yeah. Uh, I'll show you just to ha how to add a widget. So I switch into edit mode and I add this, I have this list of um, already existing widgets which are available to anybody, any team. So those widgets can be, uh, are very common. Um, and I'll, I don't know what, I have a widget here which is updates ready for stable. It will get all the updates that are ready for, well, for stable obviously and display them in a widget. <laughs> well, yeah, so that's just an example. Uh, uh, if I add this one, it will not show anything because I don't have any of them right now. So it's not a very good example. Um, but I have like plenty of widgets. And if you have ideas for widgets you want, please file an issue and we'll, we'll make yeah. sure someone looks at it. We get a mock-up ready and, you know. Uh, in the workshop widget, I will show you how to make a widget that, that displays your current um, uh, packaging re uh, package reviews in the different state that they are in. So that may be very useful because you don't always know um, when someone has um, reviewed your package or when, so, when, so, when the rel engine has created the repo and all that. But that's, that's a very simple thing that you'll be able to do if you go to the workshop. So another thing is uh, while working on hubs, you get to communicate with different teams if you're working on widgets. Like uh, if you're building widgets for different teams, you get to communicate with them and get to know the federal ecosystem more and uh, and come up with more and more ideas. So that's one. So that's one way to uh, like 
get into contribution into Fedora. So. Yeah. Yeah. This is a very simple one, which is display the text here. This is my hub, but I could have uh, a link to uh, the I don't know um, our the, rules, our how we work, uh, uh, wiki pages that describe how the team works, our kind of conduct, whichever. So uh, suppose the infrastructure team has a hub, so the admin can actually set up the different widgets in place, which are relevant to that their workflow, and then uh, in the sticky note they can add like how to. Uh, what are the steps a new contributor should take? And so these are the things that come in helpful. Yeah. And kind of nice is who's the admin, who's not admin, that kind of stuff is out of fast. So, and the hub, the way that, um, and I don't know that this is implemented exactly right now yet, but the plan is that each hub, like a team hub, is based on the fast groups. So, like the design team hub is going to be coming out of the design team fast group. Exactly. Anyone who's an admin for that fast group gets admin for this. So it's sort of it's more consistent across the Fedora apps. So the question is, is as a news user, if you were looking at this, would you see real data or would it be sort of mock-up data? So right now. So right now in the hubs instance, we have the real data in place because it gets the data from fed message and does real query. So the data that you see in the stream and then all the badges and the bugzilla issues are the real data. Yep. It might just it might just not be formatted yet for sort of yeah. you know the final consumption that we'd like it to be at. You know, so you might there might not be widgets that we'd like to show you, and you know the data might be a little rougher. Okay, great. Awesome. Okay, so the question is, are those, is, is RSS or Atom feeds available for the data in the feed widget? Currently, I don't think we generate RSS or Atom, but if you have a source in RSS or Atom and you want to display it in a widget, then that's very easy. Yeah. You just make the back-end request to this thing and display it in an HTML template yeah. that will be just the widget. So on this side, yeah. On the other side, no, we don't generate that Are, yet, you, but are you interested in getting RSS out of it or putting RSS into it? Putting oh, it in? then oh, that's, right. easy. Yeah. that's easy. That's very easy, yeah. A lot of infrastructure, a lot of our infrastructure's API uh, give us back JSON, but it's really not a problem to get something else. I don't know why I have nothing in my feed here. Probably network issue or something. Can you go to a team hub, maybe yeah. infrastructure. Infrastructure, yeah, So yeah, oh yeah, we have the cobweb alert. <laughs> So yeah, that's uh, you know the, the first thing, cobweb alert. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's uh, also a small widget that is uh, by default on every way, uh, on every page, and that just tells you that this team is hasn't been active for a while, and so just you know take a, take it with a grain of salt when you see data there. Yeah, what do we have here? Uh, some widgets. Okay, this is a development server, so it may have some dummy widget yet, but. Yeah, we meetings, so next meetings for this team. Request a new meeting here, yeah. kind of useful too. So uh, like uh, meeting is one of the place you can start, meeting is one of the place you can start contributing because there are a lot of uh, meetings, edge cases and scenarios that needs to be handled and we have the mockups in place but, uh, uh, but they are still to be made. So you, if you are looking to contribute, like I told, you can start with meetings also. Okay, so we're at time now. Um, so if anybody has any further questions, please, we're, we're here, we're at Flock, you know, email them. We have um, hubs-devel at list.fedoraproject.org is our mailing list. Uh-huh. Oh, okay, we'll look into that. Uh, yeah, it's probably a link to your hub. Instead of a link to slash. We'll figure, figure it out. Yeah. Anyway, thank you. Yeah. Sure. Thank you, everyone, this for one. coming. And please feel free to reach out at any time if you have any Do questions or anything. You'll be fine. Yeah. This one.
Okay. Yeah.